is no try. Hi, I'm Jedi Master Stendo. Memory verse time. Make sure to say it to someone without help. Greetings, young Padawans. Welcome back to Bible Memory Verse time today for Vacation Bible School. You're here with Jedi Master Moly Kenobi, and it's my job to help prepare you to be a master of God's Word. So today we're going to learn a different verse. Yesterday we learned Matthew 5, 16, let your light so shine before men. Today we're going to learn John 14, 6. Now we're going to do this a little bit different of a way. Uh, we're not going to do hand motions today. We're going to learn a different way. So if you're going to be a true master of God's Word, you might need to learn different ways to memorize it and learn it and get it in your heart and get it in your heads. So today we're going to um, put the verse up on the screen. And what we're going to do is we're going to take away different words and phrases as we go through this. And we're going to say it over and over each time until we're out of words. And so this is a really good way to learn God's word. I like to use it a lot and uh, it's, it's a good way to get it in your mind. And so uh, let's get the, um, the verse up on the screen and then we're going to get started. But first, I need my lightsaber. All right, let's get started. Okay, so John 14, 6, we got the words up here on the screen. So let's read through the verse first, just with all the words, and then we'll start taking words away. Okay, so it says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. This is a great verse. Jesus is talking about the fact that he is the only way to heaven. He is the only way to God. There's only one way. It's through Jesus Christ and our putting our faith, our trust in him that he died for our sins on the cross and that he uh, was resurrected again and he paid the penalty for our sin. Jesus says it clear as day right here. He says, I'm the way, I'm the truth and the life. No man, nobody comes to the father but by me. Okay, so let's get going here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take away a word. Uh, just one word to get started with. We'll start slow. And so we're going to do the word truth. All right, let's get rid of the word truth. All right, let's just read the verse again. Are you guys ready? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Hey, good job. We, we still got a lot of words up there. We're doing good. Let me remind you that you need, to, um, you need to say this verse with me while we're going through it, okay? Don't just listen to uh, Moly Kenobi up here. You guys need to be saying it along with me so we can get it in our heads, okay? So we're going to start putting our verse uh, reference at the front. I think I forgot that last time, John 14, 6. And so we took away truth. This time, let's take away the word Father. You guys ready? John 14, 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You guys are doing great. Let's get rid of another word, okay? Let's, uh, let's blast away the word life. Here we go. John 14, 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There we go. You guys are doing an awesome job. So we've taken away three words. We're going to take away a total of 10. Okay, so we are not even halfway there yet. Let's keep going. Let's take away a fourth word. Let's take away the word, the, la the very last word, the word me. Whew. All right, here we go. John 14, 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Excellent. We're going to take away our fifth word. So this is halfway. You guys uh, be saying it a little louder. Say it a little louder. Get in your heads. Get in your hearts. Let's take away the word way. So we've already taken away truth. We've already taken away life. Let's take away the word way. All right. Here we go. John 14, 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. All right, excellent. Okay, so now we've kind of reached over the halfway point. We're going to take away our sixth word. And I think, um, let's see, I think this time, since we're over halfway, over halfway, we're going to take away two words. See how you guys can do it this time. We're going to take away the word man and the word cometh. 
two words right beside each other. You guys think you can do it? Here we go. John 14, 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Excellent. All right, guys. Let's, do, let's keep saying it. Let's keep going. Uh, number seven. We're going to take away some words that refer to Jesus. So we're going to take away the very first word, which is Jesus. And we're also going to take away the word I. Okay? So Jesus and I. Let's get rid of them. You guys ready? First word's gone. Let's see if you can do it. John 14, 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. All right, guys, we are reaching the end. We got a lot of words that are gone, a lot of phrases that are gone. And this time we're going to take away two more words. Let's take away the word him and the word no. All right. All right, here we go. You guys ready? John 14, 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. All right, guys. You guys are doing a good job. I'm proud of you. You guys are becoming masters right now. Okay, I like that. So now then, number nine, our ninth time. We're almost done here for today. We're going to take away all the times that the word the is in there. Okay, I think there are four of them. All right, so there are four thes. Are you guys ready to slice them with me? Get your lightsabers out. You ready? One, two, three. One, two, three, four. All right, guys, doing awesome. Let's go. John 14, 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Okay. It is time to test your skills, young Padawans. It's the 10th time. We're going to take away all the words. They're all gone, all right? So we're going to get one big swipe. Are you guys ready? Here we go. No words. No reference. Let's do it. Last time. Nice and loud. John 14, 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There you go, guys. Another verse. You guys go over that today, all right? Hey, if you need to start back over, you can write this verse out, and you can start erasing words yourself. It's a great way to learn God's word. I hope that you will continue to be a master of God's word. See you next time. Ding time! Make sure to have your parents' permission before playing. What's up, guys? Welcome to today's game, Catch Your Lightsaber. In this game, you can use a lightsaber, a broom, a mop, a pool noodle, or something that has a similar shape and size. Once again, guys, you need your parents' permission. For this game, you are going to need at least two people to play. Maybe a brother, sister, cousin, neighbor, friend. Mom and dad can play. Grandma and grandpa can play. But make sure you have a clear area so that you don't bump into any tables or knock over any lamps or anything like that. So as you can see in the example, you're going to hold a lightsaber, let it go, and run to catch the other lightsaber. First, start off standing maybe one to two feet apart. Then, after you catch the lightsaber, take a step back run and try to catch it again. The goal is don't let the lightsaber hit the ground. After each turn, you're always going to take a step back. See how many times you can catch it and how far away you can get from it. You can let it drop three times, but you must start over every time, then record your highest score. So after you have let your lightsaber hit the ground three full times, the game is over. So if you're able to catch it seven times, and then the next turn, you're able to catch it nine times, make sure to send me your highest score. Don't send me all three scores. Just send me your highest. All right. Good luck in the game. Song time. Make sure to sing along.
welcome to the song time at BBS. My name is Master Jedi Lugo. I'm the pastor of Pioneer Baptist Church in Wilsonville, Oregon, and I'm going to be your song leader today. I'm going to teach you a new song. Now, actually, the song might not be brand new, but the words might be. So I want to teach those to you and then sing it together with you today. We're going to have a good time doing it throughout the week. The song is I'm in the Lord's Army, but we're going to change the words to it. It goes like this. I may never use the force on bad guys. Hear Chewbacca's battle cry. We'll hear, we'll listen for it. Fly an X-Wing in the sky. I may never be a cool Jedi. And if you happen to have a lightsaber, get it out. Be ready to swing it around with me. Uh, just be sure not to hit any brothers or sisters, moms, dads, grandmas, grandpas, or TVs, or important bases, or things like that in your house. And we'll enjoy using those. Then you go, I'm in the Lord's army, yes sir, I'm in the Lord's army, yes sir, I'm in the Lord's army, yes sir. I may never use the force on bad guys, hear Chewbacca's battle cry, fly an X-wing in the sky. I may never be a cool Jedi, but I'm in the Lord's army, yes sir. Alright, I think you got it. Ready? Here we go. I may never use the force on bad guys, hear Chewbacca's battle cry. Fly an X-Wing in the sky, I may never be a cool Jedi, but I'm in the Lord's army, yes sir. I'm in the Lord's army, yes sir. I'm in the Lord's army, yes sir. I may never use the force on bad guys, hear Chewbacca's battle cry. <laughs> Fly an X-Wing in the sky, I may never be a cool Jedi, but I'm in the Lord's army, yes sir! Alright, good job singing today, uh, we look forward to singing with you throughout the rest of the week. Picture time. You're going to get two pictures that at first may look the same, but they actually have few differences. Hint, today's picture only has three differences. Here is your first picture. Here is your second picture. Aloha! We are on Vacation Bible School day number two, lesson number two. Yesterday was about how to make God your master. And again, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, please stop the video, go back and rewatch day number one, and do so today. Because none of the other lessons are going to matter until you start a relationship with God. All right, guys. Matthew chapter number 6, verse number 24 says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. Before we jump into God's word even further, let's open in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today. We thank you so much for another day of life, another day that we can have online vacation Bible school and whether they're in Hawaii or New Mexico or Utah or Michigan or or wherever they may be Lord I just pray that you're speaking to the hearts of the young people speaking through me removing the devil and his distractions and I pray for all the young people to have a relationship with you that they have made you their father their heavenly father their master and they're excited they're excited to serve you, Lord. They're excited to get to know you through your word. As I'm excited, let's jump into it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, guys, I am glad to have you back for day number two. And like it says, no man can serve two masters. And so today's lesson, we're going to talk about some young people that might even be your age that refused to serve another master. Turn with me in your Bible to the book of Daniel, chapter number one. Daniel is in the Old Testament. And again, if you don't have your Bible, maybe you can find a phone or an iPad and search it up on Bible Gateway or some sort of Bible app, because I want you to be able to read God's Word for yourself. Daniel chapter number one, okay? So, verse number one, follow along. It says, in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, 
king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. All right, so we see here there's a new king named Nebuchadnezzar, and he has taken over this land, which means when a land gets taken over, everybody in it becomes under the rule of the new king. Moms, dads, kids, everybody's under this new king. Okay, so we skip to verses 3 and 4. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of the eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes. Verse 14. Children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Notice in verses 3 and 4, it uses the word children. Now you might read in God's word how it says children of God and children of Israel. And usually when it says that, it means everybody. Like for me, I am 36 years old right now, but I'm still a child of God. However, in these verses, it's not talking about children of God because Nebuchadnezzar is the one actually speaking. And at this point, he does not believe in God. And he is talking about actual children like you guys, like your age. You out there, it's talking probably about 8-year-olds and 9-year-olds and 12-year-olds. All of your guys' ages, that's who's here. And the king wants them taken out and he's like, you got to teach them our language. You got to teach them what we do. And you got to feed them our meat. And they got to drink wine. Imagine. Imagine if wherever you are was taken over and they started forcing you guys to eat what they want you to eat. You don't get to, oh, I want McDonald's or I want Pizza Hut or I want mom's good cooking. Nope. You got to eat what the king says and you got to drink wine. Whoa. And this was a big, big no no for these particular kids, especially Daniel. And so Daniel, we're going to keep reading verse number six. It says, Now among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Verse number seven. Unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name Belteshazzar, Hananiah, Shadrach, maybe you've heard that name before, Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. Look at verse number 8 though. Look what Daniel says. It says, But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now remember, when you hear the name Daniel, you might be thinking, oh, he's probably 25 or 35 or maybe even 45. You think he's an adult? No. At this point in Daniel's life, he is a kid. He is a child. But even at Daniel's young, young age, he knew the difference between right and wrong, and he knew the difference between serving two masters and serving one master and he said I'm purposing in my heart purposing in your heart means you're making a promise that no matter what happens no matter who else does this I'm going to stand and serve God and God uh, no matter if I'm the only one right and sometimes that's hard sometimes you see a bunch of your friends doing something that's a sin or you see a bunch of your friends not going to church or you see a bunch of your friends not serving God, and it makes you want to jump in with your friends. Because remember, Daniel and his other three friends are surrounded by a bunch of other kids that are going to eat the king's meat and they're going to drink the wine. They're not going to serve the one and only God. They're going to serve what they, they're going to do exactly what the king says. But Daniel says, uh uh, I'm not going to do it. So let's keep reading. Verse 12, it says, Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days. Let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. So he's kind of asking for like this uh, vegetable kind of stuff, like, uh, like tofu almost, and water. So no meat and no wine. He's like, just give us a little bit of this water, a little bit of this pulse, and we'll be good to go. Ten days. 
We can prove it. And so the, the captain of the prison or the head of the guard says, all right, we'll do it for 10 days and let's see what happens. Verse number 13, it says, Then let our countenances be looked upon before thee and the countenance of the children that eat the portion of the king's meat. And as thou seest, deal with thy servants. Verse 15, And at the end of ten days their countenances appeared fairer and fatter and flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Verse 17, As for these four children, remember Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. So God saw how Daniel and his friends did not sin against him. They served him and him alone. He's the only master. And so God blessed them. God made them smarter. It also says God made them fatter, but fatter just means healthier. And it says there, uh, God gave them skill and learning as well because they stood up for what was right. All the other kids ate the meat and drank the wine and they were not looking as healthy and they were not as smart. So look what happens in verses 19 and 20. It says, and the king communed with them and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah therefore stood before the king. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. Now this is pretty cool. So not only were Daniel and his friends smarter than the other kids, they were smarter than the other adults that claim to be magicians and to claim to know about the stars and the visions because they weren't serving the one true God. God made them smarter and better than the adults. Imagine that for you as an eight-year-old or as a 10-year-old and you're smarter than me, right? You're smarter. And listen, if you've got God on your side and there's adults out there that don't believe in God, you're already ahead of the game on them. And I'm not saying that for you to be prideful or anything like that, but it's so important for you guys as kids to go ahead and start your relationship with God today. Serve Him as the one true master. And listen to what happened to Daniel and his friends. They were blessed 10 times better. And they actually get promoted in the king's castle as well. So Daniel, even though he saw a bunch of other kids his age going against God, he made a promise no matter what happens, I'm going to do what's right for God and God alone. You guys got to do the same thing, all right? Because God is the only master that matters. All right, join us tomorrow as we continue to learn about not serving two masters and serving God as the only one, as He is our true Heavenly Father. We love you. God loves you even more. And aloha. Not escape your destiny. The force, its energy, is around your knee. This is the weapon of a Jedi Knight. I find your lack of faith disturbing. So what I told you was true.